Hey you doing? My name is Peter. Welcome to the basement. So tell me, when is a floppy disk drive not a floppy disk drive? Well, the simple answer is when it's a piece of wire. So today I'm going to be looking at drive wire running on the Color Computer 2. Drive wire is basically a piece of wire like this. One end of it connects into the COM port on a host PC, and the other end of it connects into the serial I.O. port on the back of your Color Computer. And it basically gives you four virtual floppy disk drives that you can use like real floppy disk drives on your color computer too. So let's take it over to the workbench and we'll have a look at it straight away. Now, here I am anyway back in my test bench. I got my Coco 2 and it's now connected to this PC here, which is running Windows XP, with the cable I showed you earlier. So I'm going from the serial I.O. port, or the Bitbanger port on the Coco 2, into COM1 on my PC here. Now, so under Windows XP, I'm after launching my DriveWare 3 GUI. So it shows me a graphical representation of the four virtual drives that it has available to me. And uh, also it lets me select a COM port, which I wish to communicate to the, the Coco with. And uh, also you need to select the type of color computer that you have. So um, the reason for this is that um, different versions of the color computer, the one, two, and three, they communicate at different baud rates because their processors are more powerful or whatever one more so than the other. So anyway, I've selected the Coco 2 here, so that'll be communicating at 57,600 bits per second. Now, Everything is set up hardware wise, everything should work, but yet it won't it won't work just yet because the Coco, as it comes from the factory, doesn't have a disk operating system or a version of DOS on it. It's got extended color basic. And what we need is we need disk extended color basic in order to be able to access any type of drive. Now with driveware, there comes a little WAV file. And um, in my case here, because it's for the Coco 2. It's called HDBCC2. There's also a HDBCC1 and 3 for the Coco 1 and 3. So what I do is I type C load M as it's a machine code file, colon EXCC and hit enter. Now I'm going to launch that WAV file here and it will play true to the Coco. The Coco should find the file and start loading it. So what's going to happen is it takes about 40 45 seconds. And uh, once it's been loaded in, the Coco will reset and I will have disk extended color basic and then I'll be able to access uh, the virtual disk drives through driveware. Now that's one of the disadvantages of using driveware this way with that particular file is every time you shut down the Coco to restart or reset, um, this actual DOS is wiped out of memory. So you end up having to go through this process again. So um, yeah, that's, that's one of the disadvantages of it. But other than that, the system works quite well. Uh, it can also cause some, in, some incompatibilities with, um, with some of the disk programs. I'll have a little chat about that in a moment. So anyway, this here is after starting up, we've got um, our disk extended color basic. Um, and it says HDB DOS 1.2 DW3, which is our driveware tree, Coco 2, because we're running it on a Coco 2. So we're all set up and good to go. Now, um, if I type dir to see what, what uh, directories and what files are in a disk on our drive, we should get an IO error because I don't actually have any disks in the drive yet. If I did that on the regular extended color basic, I get a syntax error. So at least I know that this is after loading up right and now it's trying to communicate with disk drives. Now, over here, in order to mount a disk, to put a disk image into the virtual floppy drive, we click on the door of the floppy drive and uh, it'll give us a little dialogue here where we can um, select uh, DSK files. So I'm after setting up a few. I've got here, I've got one I've named to format. So it's actually a copy of the shop.dsk file that I have here. I've copied it and renamed it to format. So shop.dsk is shop trooper. It's a game for the Coco. And what I've done is I've effectively copied that DSK file. I've renamed it. So now if I format that, I have a blank disk. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount that. It's been mounted in drive zero. And now if I type dir, instead of getting that IO error, 
it shows me that shut up bin is available on that disk. So at least we're communicating and it's reading the disks and it's reporting back correctly. Uh, we can see that the stripe zero and free is 56. So anyway, in order to, in order to format a disk, we type um, DSK INI space zero. So what this is, is DSK is obviously disk, INI is initialize, and space zero is to do with it's in virtual drive zero. If it was in drive one, two, or three, I would change that zero to one, two, or three accordingly. Now, when I hit enter, it asks me, erase hard drive zero, are you sure, yes or no? So it sees these virtual floppy drives as hard drives. Um, so I'm sure I wish to erase it, I press Y, and it'll go through the format procedure, which takes about a minute or so. So our format is after completing. And um, if I type dir now, instead of seeing shock, what I have is I have no files available. It says drive zero, free 68. Now, if I wish to save a program that I've written myself onto a disk, what I can do, I'll, I'll write a quick hello world program. So we'll do 10 print and um, eight bits, just like that, just to see. And uh, 20 go to 10. And now when I run that, it does as a hello world program, and it scrolls it up the screen. I'm going to hit break. If I want to save that to my disk, all I need to do is type save, inverted commas, uh, save with an E, inverted commas, uh, we'll call it bits, close the inverted commas, and hit enter. And it, uh, it says, okay, so it's obviously after saving. Now, if I tap dir, we can see that bits.bass has been saved onto that disk drive. Now, what I'll do, if I type list here, I can see that um, that the, the code I've tapped in is still there. I'm going to tap new to clear the memory. And now if I type list, code isn't there anymore. I'm going to unmount that disk. Now if I type dir, I get an IO error. And if I type run, absolutely nothing should happen. So I'll clear the screen here. So we know that that lit program I've typed has completely gone off the, off the cocoa. It's not there anymore. Now, if I mount, my to format disk again, and I tap dir here, you'll see it's back with our bits there. I do load uh, bits and enter, it says okay. Now if I list, I get my code back, and if I run, it runs. So there what we've effectively done is, using a, a, a disk image, we've created a copy of that disk image, We've renamed it, we've formatted it, and now we can use it to save our own programs on. So um, that's, really, that's really the bread and butter of, of this particular uh, driveware application, I suppose. You can, um, you can write your own programs and all the rest, and you can save them out, not onto a cassette or a real disk or anything, but onto a hard drive. And then the advantage of that is you could email it to somebody, you could put it on your, um, on your Google Drive or whatever. There's, there's a myriad of things you could do much more easily than if you had the code on a physical disk. I mean, if, if you were writing a game or something for the Coco, you could do it in an emulator, which is much more comfortable. You, you have m many more tools to use. And then see if it works on the Coco by just transferring that across with Driveware. That way there's no fumbling around with copying stuff onto real disks. Or it, it's, it's just a very handy way of using it. So if I wish to load a game through Driveware here, um, I need to have my disk extended color basic obviously ready to go. And all I need to do is again to mount the game disk, which is shop.dsk here into my virtual drive. Now once it's in there, I can see what's on the disk by tapping there and I see here that it's shop.bin. So in order to load it, uh, I type load m because it's a binary file and it's called shock. So I put shock between inverted commas. I can put my colon and exec, and that way, once it loads, it'll automatically execute. So I hit enter, it's accessing the disk there, and uh, after a couple of seconds, the game should automatically start. And there we go. So that shock trooper loaded up just like that. Um, it is black and white on my system because normally a game like this uses 
um, NTSC artifacting to display color on screen. This, however, is a PAL based Coco and it's a PAL TV. So uh, the NTSC artifacting uh, techniques that they use don't, don't work, obviously, on a PAL system. So for a lot of games, um, I end up with a, a monochrome kind of black and white type setup. So and that's the reason for that. But there, there is how DriveWire 3 loads games. Okay, so another thing that DriveWire 3 can do is it can boot from bootable floppy disk images. So I'll show you using a bootable version of Nitros 9, which is an operating system for the Cocos. So um, in order to boot from a bootable floppy disk, first of all, we want to mount our bootable floppy, which I have here is Nitros 9, into the first disk drive here. And then what we do is we perform again a C load, M colon exe C, and hit enter. Now, but this time, instead of running HDB CC2, we're going to run DW3.CC2, which is our driver tree disk operating system for the Coco 2. So when I run that, and when I launch that, it'll, it'll start feeding through to Coco again. But the difference is it only takes about seven seconds to load up that. And once it's loaded up, what it'll try and do is boot from the disk that's in that tray. So that's what it's doing here. It's booting Nitrous 9. And here we are, it's after booting up, it's ready to be used, I suppose, or will be ready to be used. There we are, welcome to Nitrous 9 level 1 with DriveWire 4, it says, on the color computer 2. Now, here you can see that it's getting information from the host computer because the date it's given is October 18, 2020 at 11.46, 26 a.m. And that's the same date and time as I have on the host system here. Now, I don't know too much about, about Nitrous 9, I'm only after getting it working in literally the last 20 minutes so um i said i'd show it to you as i got it working but um as i say i i haven't i, I haven't used it too much but this is this is another thing that driveware can do obviously you can load games you can do all kinds of stuff using driveware but as i spoke about before there is one little problem or there can be one potential problem where there's incompatibilities with some disk software now, uh, when we're using DriveWare there, normally just to, to access disks and all the rest, we need to load up our disk extended color basic 1.1. So that instead of being on a ROM chip that can't be overwritten inside in the Cocoa, it's actually when we load it up the way we do it, it's stored in a portion of memory that normally isn't touched. So it can sit there in its little portion of memory, happy out that it's not going to be modified or changed in any way. Now, some software uh, was written a little bit differently. So the, the author of the software may have used different memory access and that kind of thing to speed up the program or to, to create some special effects or something. So with some disks, uh, the programs on them will access that little portion of memory that normally is reserved for our, uh, for our little uh, disk extended color basic. And if that happens, it will overwrite the disk extended color basic that we have in the system and then everything will crash and stop working. So that said, there, there are very few, very few disks that do that, but it is something that can happen. But again, we just reset our computer and we start again. You know, that's, there's, there's no physical damage done. So that is DriveWare for the Coco 2 at least. And there is a DriveWare 4 also available, which is much more advanced and which has a lot more features. You can network a load of Cocos together. You can have um, VCC, for example, which is a Coco emulator running on your host system. And you can link that into the network of Cocos as if it were a real Coco as well, or have multiple instances. So um, there's, there's a lot that can be done with DriveWire 4, and I may well make a video on that at some stage. But at the moment, anyway, this is DriveWire 3, and, um, and that's pretty much my video on it. So look, I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, give us an old thumb up, thumbs up, um, subscribe if you wish. And um, if you didn't give us a thumbs down and don't subscribe, and um, leave a comment. And look, I'll be along in another video fairly soon, so uh, keep an eye out and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.